Good afternoon, everyone. It's Father Neil. It is Thursday, February 18th, my weekly update. The day after Ash Wednesday, it was nice to begin Lent with the people in church to celebrate uh, the gift of God's love. And as we journey with Jesus to the cross, through the cross, the resurrection, to come together in solidarity as a parish community and to actually be able to put the mark of the ashes on our foreheads and go forth uh, as a community is a great uh, strengthening to me and I hope to all of you who are able to participate. So Lent is off to the good start and as I said uh, in the homily on the, it was on the website uh, that Lent is a joyful time. It's not a happy time but it is joyful. It is leading us to get closer back to God and to put all of our stuff in perspective and we'll use those disciplines of uh, Lent for fasting, almsgiving, and and prayer to help open our hearts up to God and open our hearts up to one another and to see how we can continue to struggle through what seemed like a year-long Lent with this pandemic uh, to help each other out. I've been very heartened as I drive around the neighborhood. I've been making several home visits recently and to see all the uh, neighbors helping out, shoveling other people out, helping all that. There's still obviously a lot out there, uh, but it's been uh, uh, obviously very good to see that people are doing that. We're certainly blessed to have uh, a good staff here. So with the big snow, Monday was a paid holiday and, and Pat came in at, back at 10 o'clock that night to uh, plow out some snow to make sure things when we got in the morning would be okay. He was here till midnight and then back and he and Wayne were back in the morning, Tuesday morning. So we've been blessed to have a lot of good help to keep the uh, church open, to keep the uh, parking lots and the walkways open to make that possible for the school to meet and for things to go on here. So counting our blessings in, in that regard. So thank you to all that, and thank you to the volunteers. Some of the Boy Scouts helped out again to shovel out the stairwells and things like that. There's a lot of them at the school, so it really does help to have them dig that out. So that's uh, been a good start. A lot of things are coming up, our normal Lenten activities. Many of them are curtailed because we are not going to have evenings of reflection. Still, people are afraid to come to church so that it's harder to get uh, things done. We're doing more online. All the Stations of the Cross this Lent will be uh, virtual, uh, taped so you can tune in on them anytime you like. Uh, we will, of course, have uh, Stations of the Cross uh, in person on Good Friday at 3 o'clock at our normal time. All that calendar stuff is, is on the website and in the bulletin. Um, and again, all the physical distance rules that uh, we're currently uh, operating under will continue. The Archdiocese said they don't see any con foreseen change till after Easter, if then. Um, and the Office of Catholic Schools is saying that they're not really looking for any uh, children's uh, after-school activities, sports, or otherwise for the rest of the academic year, uh, probably. So unless things pick up uh, incredibly well, that's going to be you know, the norm for the rest of the academic year anyway. But we can celebrate uh, Mass together. We can celebrate all of our sacraments. The First Reconciliation will be this Saturday, and we'll have the Rite of Enrollment for First Communion the following Sunday. So. Uh, confirmation. I'll be doing two confirmations since the bishops aren't coming out to larger groups. The uh, priests have been, the pastors have been delegated to do that. And again, because of uh, limitations on the number of people we can have in church and all that kind of stuff, uh, we'll be doing two confirmations, one on uh, Friday the 12th and one on Saturday the 13th of March, uh, to make sure that the children and their families can invite, you know, siblings and some of the immediate family to make sure that it's not uh, so um, isolating for all of them. So that's the good news. Those things are continuing. The full schedule of uh, events is up. Certainly the Pope has declared this the uh, year of St. Joseph. So St. Joseph's Day falls March 19th on a Friday night. On a Friday, where since the Stations of the Cross are virtual, we'll have a Mass in honor of St. Joseph in the church as well. Also for the Annunciation and so forth. So there's a lot going on. We continue to try to keep the church going as best we can all of our normal liturgical functions, all of our activities that we can do, uh, we are doing uh, just in a limited way. Hope that uh, more of you as the vaccine rolls out. It's been a horrible, incompetent rollout in many ways, and but uh, hopefully people will be able to get vaccinated and feel safe to come back. But even with the vaccinations, we obviously are going to continue to be wearing masks and so forth, uh, simply for the protection of everybody until things do get better. On a positive note, the mayor has opened up uh, the city to uh, phase four so that we can have the 50% dining capacity and so on. And hopefully that will help our businesses and hopefully people will come out and patronize them and try to get people back to work and on the job 
while keeping everybody safe and healthy. So that's good news. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, certainly the big snowstorm didn't help anything, obviously with uh, power outages around the country. Certainly the vaccine rollout was a little bit slower because of that. So a lot of effort going to, to try to keep the roads and our, and our blocks and our own houses open has taken a lot of energy. So uh, hopefully we'll pick that back up and that, you know, in a few weeks, the uh, spring will be upon us, at least in terms of warmer weather. So a lot to look forward to. Uh, after Lent, there's Easter and after winter, there is the spring here in Chicago. Uh, so that's been going on. Uh, we haven't gotten any more definitive uh, information from the Archdiocese about uh, budget parameters, but we'll continue to work on that in terms of getting our our budget for St. Robert's done for the coming year, see where we're at, and then once the new pastor is named and once those budgets are in for the both parishes, see how they can consolidate in terms of what we might be doing uh, together and what we might need to do differently. Uh, so really nothing concrete about that yet, except things will change, you know, starting next summer or this coming summer. Um, as I said, we're still waiting for the pastor announcement. I had thought that they would be done by now, uh, I think we're targeting early March. I'm not quite sure exactly when they expect to have those announcements made. Some pastors have been named to some New My Church groupings. Ours has not yet, so there's no definitive timeline for that. But I did meet with the parish council last night, and we're looking at things like how we can uh, move forward into this merger, into this unification. Who are we as St. Roberts? What do we need to preserve? What, what may change, and how do we adapt to that change? And certainly, what does it mean today to... Uh, to be a um, member of a community in a non-participatory -particip culture, the fact that people are not coming the way they used to, the fact that COVID has made that physical distancing much harder for people to get together, that we're in this um, digital age where we're doing a lot more online and through Zoom and through YouTube videos, uh, how do we build a new sense of community? So that's really got nothing to do with Renew My Church, except that that's accelerated the process that will clearly go on. Uh, the other Renew My Church issue, which is kind of an elephant in the room, I did read a letter at Masses last week, and it's on the website, and uh, that things are going out, that they will be considering changing the name of the uh, Parish of Record, which um, is where the sacramental records may be kept. Uh, Rome requires that in any kind of decree about unification, creating a new parish. Uh, and really, it doesn't make any difference. The new pastor, whoever that may be, can keep records at both places. The reality is they chose St. Robert Bellarmine for two reasons. One, it's on a main street, much more visible. Uh, so if you're going to attract people, it would look, uh, you know, be more uh, easier to get to. St. Constance is tucked away. And St. Constance has been identified, rightly or wrongly, as a Polish national parish in the minds of the public. So they may not want to come to St. Constance if they're looking for an American type parish. A misapprehension, of course, will be one parish, but nonetheless, perception is a lot of it. So, um, but there has been some concern among the Polish community at uh, St. Constance that uh, their parish might close and that this decree uh, does not give them any assurance that they will stay open. And the thinking was by uh, presenting the possibility of changing the name to St. Constance as the parish of record uh, might give them some. Um, more sense of security. My feeling is that since it doesn't really matter, change the decree gives the impression that it does matter, and people are playing more, uh, putting more into it than it's really worth, and that's simply going to create more confusion and a lot of greater, uh, greater mistrust as we move forward, and we have to work together to overcome that uh, as a parish and, and as, a, as in, uh, two communities to try to come together. So um, it is what it is. It's one of those things that. Uh, Nobody wants to see change, and uh, some people are taking things out of context and making it worse than it is, uh, but I think that we need to let that blow over and not get overly excited about that. So the Pressville Council will meet on March 2nd to make a recommendation to the Cardinal whether we should change the decree or leave it the same. Uh, either way, I think that A, it won't make a difference in reality, but B, no matter what's decided, it will create some misimpressions uh, for people, and that's something we just have to work harder to overcome. So pray about that. Certainly more important things in our lives are family and friends and community, how we're taking care of each other, how we're getting through the pandemic, how we're going to let Lent be a time of grace where we can open ourselves up to God to change us so that we can be more like Christ.
more loving, more compassionate, more caring, improving our relationships with uh, our families, our friends, our neighbors, uh, our community, and improving our relationship with ourselves and with God as well. So lots of good materials out there. Uh, there are plenty of daily meditations online. We've got some here. Uh, there's some that have gone out. Um, a lot of good YouTube videos. Uh, there's a lot of bad ones too, so be careful what you look up. You know, go to a trusted source like the Bishop's Conference. Uh, certainly anything coming out of uh, the Archdiocese on these programs is very sound theology, and I think most of what I've seen has good spiritual perspective as well. So uh, that's important for all of us. Uh, and I think also um, to remember that in spite of all of our difficulties, there are an awful lot of people out there who are struggling, hungry, homeless, um, that they don't have, they're alone, they're isolated, uh, don't have access to perhaps medical care or um, companionship or support, and uh, how do we uh, keep them in our prayers and kind of put our own problems, as important as they are, into perspective to try to get outside ourselves to make a world a better place. And so that's what I hope to do here as your pastor. I hope that's what we do as a parish community, and I certainly hope that that's what we all do in our families to those around us. So God bless you all. Have a great week and certainly a very, very blessed Lent.